Easter Sunday morning. Let's sing and worship Jesus Christ, our risen Savior.
Amen.
Happy Easter. So glad that you're able to join us this morning and that we're able to worship together, even if it's virtual. It's a beautiful spring day. Christ is risen. Now, if you're new to NECC, we're so happy that you joined us today. We'd love to hear from you. So maybe message us on Facebook or Instagram. Let us know you're joining us this morning. We sure appreciate your faithfulness in giving as we're going through these challenging times. Remember that you can give online on our website. Just go to the menu, drop down, then hit click or click on give. And then that'll take you right to where you can donate. You can also donate via auto draft. Uh, you can send an email or snail mail to the church uh, with donations as well. So thank you for your giving. And of course, we always say this within the context of as you are able. We know a lot of people are going through tough times, but as you give, it enables us to be a blessing to others. In fact, this week, we were able to provide lunch for one of the local shelters here for all of their clients on Thursday, and that's because you give, and we have a Holy Spirit fund. We've also been able to come alongside many others who've been struggling or had difficulty in this time. So thank you for your generosity. Also, I want you to remember to share your prayer needs with us. So again, you can message us on social media, or you can shoot an email to the church, or if you wanna go old fashioned, feel free to pick up that phone and give us a call. It'd be great to talk with you. We'd love to know about any needs you're aware of or any way we can partner with you in prayer. I'm gonna be back in just a few minutes to share an Easter message, but I think Celeste has got some important stuff going on with kids life. So there in your home, kids, everybody, why don't you give Celeste a big hand? Happy Easter, everybody. I am so excited to uh, to tell you about all the wonderful things that have been happening in kids' life last week. Uh, we had uh, a really huge week, and uh, and, and here's what, what we had going on. A few weeks ago, then, uh, then a whole bunch of the kids got together, and we stormed five below, and these kids went wild uh, doing a shopping spree for Easter baskets for our neighbors in South Norwalk. Uh, our plan was to put the Easter baskets together as a team. Unfortunately, due to uh, social distancing, uh, that had to be done offline, but we were able to get these Easter baskets out to the community last week. And uh, so I know that we've made a whole bunch of kids really happy this morning. So kids, great job choosing some fabulous gifts for those Easter baskets. Uh, they certainly came together wonderful. Uh, the next thing that, that we had going on last week, I've been asking you guys to do crafts for the nursing home over in Wilton, and we had a huge drop-off of crafts and cards and all sorts of fun stuff last week. And so those residents are going to be enjoying those things this morning and getting a little bit of Easter love uh, in, in their time of, of being socially isolated. So, so that's really wonderful. You guys did a great job with that. The last thing is we had some Zoom conferences this week, and I got to see your beautiful faces and we had a lot of fun. We had a, a, um, a devotional together and we played some games and, and everybody who joined me, we had a really great time. So I look forward to doing that again with you this week. So we've got four things going on Kids Life this week. Number one, uh, check out the email. I've got the uh, Bible story videos up for you. They're really good. You should check them out. A lot of fun with that. Uh, number two, if you guys haven't done it yet, uh, I emailed you about across the country. We're posting crosses on our front door, on our mailbox, anywhere outside to share our faith, to share uh, the blessings that Jesus Christ has given us and the forgiveness uh, and, and him rising from the dead this morning. So if you haven't done a cross and posted it up on social media, I would love for you to do that. Uh, just uh, do the hashtag of across the country and also tag at NECC Life so that we can see what you've done. Uh, number three, Zooming this week. I want to Zoom with you guys again. Let's do Tuesday and Thursday at 4 o'clock. I look forward to seeing you there. And finally, let's do some cards this week for the staff at this nursing home. You know, we, we didn't, we, we've uh, been giving the love to the residents. Let's, uh, let's bless those nurses and doctors who are also there and send them some cards with love. I'd love to get that stuff in from you guys. All right, see you next week. And I'll see you on Zoom on Tuesday and Thursday.
have you said happy Easter to the people you're there watching with in your home? Why don't you turn to them? Give them a big smile. I'm going to smile at Rob over here. Give them a big smile. Say happy Easter. All right, now turn to the other side. Give them a big high five. It's an Easter high five. Get it from one of the guys on the stage here. All right. It's Easter morning. Now, I heard about a wife who invited some people over for Easter dinner. At the dinner table, she turned to their six-year-old daughter and said, Honey, would you like to say the Easter blessing over the meal? I wouldn't know what to say, the little girl replied. Just say what you hear your mommy say, the wife answered. So the daughter bowed her head. She paused. And then she said, Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? Well, I don't know about you, but right now with the shelter in place and everything else going on, uh, it'd be nice to have some folks over for Easter dinner. In fact, it'd be nice to have dinner out anywhere. During these challenging times, it's good to remember some of those good dinners, some of those good times we've had. Maybe there's some times in life that you can remember that are almost too good to be true. Kind of pinch me moments. Like, is this really happening. So just again, to make sure that you're still awake there in your home, lightly and gently, just reach to the person next to you, give them a little pinch, say, hey, are you awake? You with me this Easter? Pinch the person there. Pinch me moments happen in our life. I remember my engagement night with Roxanne. And some of you maybe heard me talk about this, but it's been over 21 years ago. Can you believe that? Over 21 years ago, and Roxanne had flown in from the Phoenix area where she was living to where I was there in Southern California at the time. And uh, I had set up this kind of elaborate plan with dinner, all this great stuff. And uh, the night came and we're driving to the restaurant. And as we're driving, uh, we were holding hands uh, on the way. And Roxanne is talking to me and she's like, Thomas, why are your hands so sweaty? What's going on? Well, I didn't want to reveal it to her, but I was very nervous because I thought she was going to say yes, but I wasn't 100% sure. And if you know Roxanne, you know she can be a little unpredictable. So I was pretty sure she was going to say yes, but I wasn't 100% sure how this night was going to end. So I was pretty nervous about asking. So we finally arrived at the La Costa Resort there where we were going to have a special dinner that night. And I made up my mind that I was going to propose to her before dinner. I'm like, if I'm paying this much for a meal, I'm at least going to be able to relax and enjoy it and eat the food and not being so nervous. So I had set it all up at the restaurant in advance, and we, they took us over to this kind of special place with a great overlook. And uh, she's sitting there relaxed on the settee. For those of you, that's a couch. And uh, the moment the time came, I could see people kind of watching to help others in the restaurant. I got down one on knee, and I asked her, and she said yes. No, I should say it like this, and she said yes. And for me, that was kind of a pinch me moment. I could think of other kind of pinch me moments. The birth of our four children was one of those moments like, wow, this is just amazing. Is this really real? I remember the 1986 Mets World Series win. Come here, somebody. Woo -woo. That was a pinch me moment when I was a kid. I couldn't believe they won that series. I couldn't believe they won game six and then went on to win it. Of course, the Giants winning the Super Bowls, uh, especially in 2008 when they came back and won over the undefeated Patriots. Sorry, Patriots fans, to bring that memory on Easter morning. But that was a pinch me moment for me. I remember in the fourth quarter, I couldn't believe it was happening. It was a miracle. And of course, when the Knicks even win a game, that's a pinch me moment. We all celebrate, and uh, as you can see, a lot of my uh, pinch me moments are sports related. I am really missing sports right now. We have no sports going on. Uh, I'm relying on you know table football or other things to uh, to occupy. But you've probably had some pinch me moments in your life. So real quick, in like three words, turn to the person, look at them, and say, "Hey, this was a pinch me moment I had." One, two, three, go. Share with them a pinch me moment you've had in your life. The first thing that came to your mind. All right. Well, this morning. Today, on Easter, we celebrate the ultimate pinch me moment in history, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when it happened, the disciples, after they came to, began to realize that this 
was something that would change the world forever. So the story of Jesus' resurrection is either the most outrageous case of kind of mass hysteria that has ever happened, or it is the truest story that has ever been told. What we celebrate today, the life, the death, and then the resurrection of Jesus did absolutely change everything for us. When he died and rose again three days later, it reversed the centuries-old curse that had been upon humanity. Death was no longer in charge, that Christ had overcome sin and death, reconciling us to God and restoring the eternal life that God had always wanted for his people. So your view of the resurrection, your view of what we celebrate today, your view of Jesus Christ himself will greatly impact your prayers. It will greatly impact, in fact, every area of your life. So you remember we're in this series we've been walking through during this time of COVID-19 and coronavirus. How do we go to God? How do we talk to him? And we're in this series when God's people pray. And we've been focusing on Paul's prayers and writings for the early church. Now remember, prayers aren't just empty words hurled at the sky. They're conversations. Conversations with God. And in fact, they're the most important conversations we have in our life. So we're going to look at Paul's writing in Colossians chapter 1 when he talks to them about who Jesus is. And then we're going to look at how does this then impact us when we pray. So if you've got your Bible, if you've got a note card, you're going to use a device or whatever, turn there with me now if you will. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians was written by this guy named Paul who was a leader in the early church. He wrote a, a majority of the New Testament and he writes to us in Colossians chapter 1, beginning verse 9. For in him, this is Jesus he's talking about, for in Jesus the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. This means that the sum total of the essence of God, all he is, all his being, all his attributes are in Christ. And that in Christ, there's no additions, no add-ons needed. This is a basic truth of the Christian faith. It's a basic truth that we celebrate on a day like today, Easter, that Jesus was God, fully present in human history. Fully God and fully man. Jesus didn't just possess a portion of God's attributes. He can't be lumped together with other spiritual beings or angels or any other forces. He is our source of all truth and strength and hope and salvation. For in him dwells the fullness of the deity. But Paul doesn't stop there. Look at the next verse, verse 10. And he says, and you, nudge your neighbor, say, hey, and you, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. You and I have been filled in him. We're sinners to be sure, but we've been given fullness through what Christ has done on our behalf. Through Christ willingly giving himself and then resurrecting, we have been given fullness. In other words, you become a partaker in God's very nature through Christ. We have the fullness that God wants for every human being, and it comes through Christ. So Paul's saying here, stop looking around for fulfillment in other things and anyone else. You have Christ. You have everything you need in Christ if you'll just turn to him. So when you pray, you know that you're going the one where you can find everything you need, even the fullness for that emptiness or that shame or those places in your heart that seem like they're broken. Christ can come right in there and bring fullness and abundance. Skip down the same chapter to verse 12. Paul writes, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith and the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. Paul says here that we can experience in Christ the new covenant. New covenant just simply means this new agreement or this new way of being with God. We can be forgiven and reconciled to God. 
by embracing the work of Christ on the cross and believing in his resurrection. Paul says we are then together with Christ through faith. We are then raised to life and newness of life in him. That's what the sacrament of baptism represents, that we are buried with Christ and raised to newness in life with him. So Paul is saying, basically, whatever happens to Christ when you're in him happens to you. So when God sees you, when you're in Christ, he sees Christ. And your sins are wiped away and forgiven. I love the next verse, verse 13. And you... All right, do it again. Elbow the person next to you, but gently. Don't, don't hurt him. Just, and he's talking about you again. And you, all right, now say, hey, he's talking about me too. And you who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him. God made alive together with Jesus, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Paul says we were dead in our sins. How many of you know that if you're dead, you can absolutely do nothing to help yourself? There's absolutely nothing you can do. You're totally relying on someone else, their power, their life to come into you. Paul says we were dead in our sins, totally stuck, doomed without hope. But through the love and life-giving message of Jesus Christ that comes to us on Easter morning, we can receive and experience forgiveness. Forgiveness for everything that once alienated us or kept us from God. When Christ died and rose again, he atoned for all our sin. Not just the portion, not just some, not just the pick and choose kind of thing, but he gave himself for it all. And in Christ, this morning you can find freedom. You can find forgiveness. You can be released from condemnation of your sin, whether it's past whether it's something you're presently struggling with or even if it's things in the future that might come and tempt you, you can be released from it through Christ. This morning we celebrate, as Paul said, that through Christ we are truly made alive in God. That as his forgiveness comes, as his kindness comes into our life, as we receive and believe in him, then we are made truly alive. This is that same idea of experiencing his fullness. Jesus promised us, he said, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Paul says right here in this verse that we're made alive. Notice the next verse, next word, together with him. That we are together with Christ because of what he has done for us. Paul continues, hey, that's a good pinch me moment. Think about it. If you're, if, you're, if you're made alive with Christ, just pinch your person next to you and say, you're made alive in Christ. That is surreal. That's unbelievable that we are together with Christ. Now, he, he continues in the next verse, verse 14. He says, it's done by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal, so rightful, demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Paul's just elaborating on what he's been talking to us about here. And he says, he describes kind of this cancellation of debts. Now, we, we can all relate to, to debts and what that means and the legal obligation to pay them. This context here in these days, the, the financial obligations would be written on parchment. So it wasn't stored in a computer somewhere, or, you know, something else. It was usually on parchment. And that parchment, if there was a debt, there was an agreement, it was possible for that parchment to be washed off and made clean or all the debt that was there be erased. That's literally what Paul's saying here as he's writing these words. It's really, he's saying and there was an IOU. You had a debt, by the way, a debt that you or I couldn't pay. But we had a debt that was legally owed. It was an obligation that was ours, but that because of Christ and his blood shed on the cross and because of Easter Sunday morning, our debt has been completely erased. It's been wiped away. Those indictments that stood against us are totally and forever obliterated. It is finished. In fact, those are the exact words Jesus said on the cross. It is is finished. But there's more. Not only did Christ bring us fullness and cancel the debt that we owe, Paul's going to tell us that he defeated once and for all 
all the powers of evil. In this last verse, verse 15, Paul is describing what was going on behind the scenes on Easter weekend. Verse 15, he disarmed the rulers and authorities by putting them to open shame. So he's talking about what God was up to Easter weekend. God disarmed the rulers and authorities by putting them to open shame, by triumphing over them in him, in Jesus. Now, this was not the visible situation that was going on to those who were spectators on Good Friday. In fact, they thought that they were witnessing kind of the end of this dream. They were witnessing the Lord captive and, and, and dragged through the streets, stumbling in agony, trying to carry his own cross on his back. He was spit on, condemned, and it looked like there was no hope whatsoever. But Paul says here, that's not the case. What was actually happening was the enemy was being disarmed. Now, he's talking here about triumphing, and Paul is referring to something that would have been familiar with its readers in the context of the day. In Roman times, generals would, after a victory in battle, would strip their enemies, and after they vanquish them, they would drag them through the streets as prisoners of war, and there'd kind of be a parade through the streets, a victory parade. They'd be lined up behind the, the conquering chariots and the marching soldiers, Paul's listeners were familiar kind of with this triumph, with this victory of what would happen in the natural. Paul's making this parallel to what was going on in the spiritual realm on Easter weekend that God through Christ was triumphing over all evil, over all sin, over all sickness, over all defeat, depression, whatever you want to say. Christ was triumphing over because of his love for you and for me. This is what was happening in the cosmic realms on that first Easter weekend. It looked like Jesus was defeated. It looked like he was a public spectacle. What looked like was a huge win for evil and for the enemy actually turned out to be the enemy's absolute demise. And God triumphed once and for all through Christ. This morning, Christ is risen. All the evil forces and powers and authorities have been disarmed and disgraced by him. And he now sits at the right hand of the Father. I love how the writer in Hebrews describes Christ now that he's in heaven. Hebrews chapter 4, looking at verse 14. So then, since we have a great high priest who entered heaven... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. Don't doubt. Even when things get tough, when things are struggles, hold firmly to what you believe. Next verse. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. Listen. For he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So, verse 16 says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Let me say that again. So, verse 16 says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Man, when God's people pray. When you and I pray, we can come boldly to the throne of our gracious God because of Jesus and his victory on Easter Sunday morning. Can I get a shout of amen there in your home? Amen. You guys can shout amen here too. Amen. We can come boldly because of Christ. Now think about this. Uh, when you go to your house, you walk in. If you're a child or if you're uh, the owner of the home, you just go in and you, let's use the refrigerator for an analogy. You go in and you go to your refrigerator and it's your house. You're a part of it. So you just go and kind of get what you want out of the cabinet. You eat whatever it might be. When I go home to my parents' house and I go in, I do whatever, I'm not timid. If I want to go to the refrigerator, I go to the refrigerator, open it up. Hey, what can I grab? What can I eat? I don't worry about it. I don't think about it because I am their son. I am their child. I can go boldly into that home and just grab whatever I want because it's mine. I'm an heir. It's part of, I can 
partic- uh, participate and receive it because I'm a child of theirs. So it is, Paul saying, when we approach God, we can come boldly because you are his child. I don't know if there's a refrigerator in heaven. But you can open it up and grab whatever you need. You can talk to God about whatever is on your heart. Because of Christ, you can go boldly to God. Because of Christ, we can go boldly and receive his mercy and find grace, Paul says. I love that last line, grace for when we need it most. You might be at a place right now in the midst of this chaos and isolation, all the changes that have occurred where you just simply need some grace. I want you to know you can go to your gracious God. You can open it right up. You can go right in there and say, hey, God, I need some grace. And he will respond because he loves you and you are his child. I know I could sure use some grace right about now. And because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can find it. Because of Jesus and his resurrection, we who were dead are now alive. We were lost and now we're found. We lack nothing if we are in Christ. When your plans fall apart, you're left with that hopeless feeling. You can come boldly to Christ because he is risen. When you're facing testings or challenges like this coronavirus, things that are kind of beyond your imagination, you can come boldly to your gracious God. We lose loved ones or family or feeling the pain of grief we can come boldly before God in prayer and even when we disappoint God or we discourage or disobey we can receive God's forgiveness we can come boldly Paul says and receive his mercy because Christ is risen we are raised with him to walk fully alive in the newness that he has for us. My friends, this Easter, I want you to know Christ is risen. And when you pray, you can come boldly to your gracious God. Would you bow your head now? Let's just pause here for a moment. Whatever it is that comes to your heart and mind, would you just pray along with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that as we celebrate Christ, our risen Lord, that through him you have made a way for us to experience your grace, your mercy, your provision. may me truly experience being raised from death to life. May Christ truly receive glory and honor on this day. And God, when we pray, may we come with boldness as your son, as your daughter, knowing that you have given us all we need through Christ. today and every day. In his name we pray. Everybody said in Jesus name. Amen. Let's sing together.
this week that because Christ is risen when God's people pray when you pray you can come boldly to the gracious throne of God and he will meet you right there God bless you happy Easter we'll see you again in a few days